So the situation in Azovstal is really dire. I can tell you that to evacuate the civilians from there was an international effort that we were trying to bring up uh, for uh, uh, the last months or so, and it was incredibly complicated, though it was civilians, women, children, and elderly. So right now our goal is to evacuate uh, the wounded defenders of Azovstal, and Russians do not want to do that by any means. Uh, we are trying to get uh, the United Nations, the Red Cross, and other organizations to uh, formulate a mechanism so we can get uh, the people out, uh, but unfortunately right now uh, there is no luck in that. Um, we have talked to our uh, leaders of the defenders there, and they understand that this is a suicide mission. However, they want to continue doing it. Uh, they take it as a you know, great result that on May 9th, when Putin was giving his announcement on the Red Square at the parade, he was not any victory. He was not able to say, we took Mariupol, because they were not able to conquer Azovstal because our defenders are still there. And this is one of the matters of pride that they are taking, saying he did not get us. So right now our efforts are concentrated on getting the wounded people out of there. Uh, and uh, the last piece would be to make sure that uh, uh, all the defenders uh, are uh, in safety. How hopeful are you of getting them out of there and how long do you think the mission might take? So, uh, again, we can only uh, assume that compared to how the mission to take the civilians out looked like. So, first of all, it was a very dangerous mission for the ones who, was who were performing it. And, uh, of course, it was uh, um, incredibly hard to do. So, for you to get a feeling of it, it's... Um, uh, different levels of agreement that have to be done. The political agreement with Russians, the military agreement with the generals, the organizational part with the international community who are helping out. So people would need to get in and out and nothing should happen on the way. And before we were able to take the civilians out, it was at least 20 attempts to get those humanitarian corridors out, 20 where something went wrong and the missions were aborted. So right now it's very hard to, um, uh, to prognose uh, how much time it would take to take the wounded people out. And uh, we, I can only assure you that we will uh, never stop trying to do that. No doubt it's a very complex operation there. Meanwhile, Odessa has come under heavy attack. Why is this city so significant to not only Ukraine but other countries that rely on it? Well, first of all, because of the ports. So before the war, Ukraine was one of the top three world producers of grain, wheat, sunflower oil and tomatoes and corn. So right now we are not anymore because our ports are closed. We are not able to fulfill on the previous orders. And uh, we have discussed it with UN mission already that the world all in all is facing the food shortage crisis because Russian blocked the ports and we cannot get the orders that we already promised to fulfill. So uh, with this, uh, it's uh, getting critically important for Russians to keep the ports occupied and critically important for us to make sure that we deoccupy the ports and we are able to uh, get goods in and out. The fuel shortage that Ukraine is facing right now is also related to that because all the fuel in by, um, by the trucks, it's almost impossible uh, to get it in, in the amounts that we need. So with the blocked uh, port cities uh, would uh, remain dire and uh, we will not be able to operate as a country normally. Well, President Zelensky has called for international help. How can other countries assist here? Well, continue pushing Russia on uh, removing its forces, continue putting more and more sanctions on Russia to make them at least uh, get back at the places which are critical for us. And um, the most important point is obviously making sure that once the sanctions are put on Russia, that there would not be other markets found uh, to its oil and gas. 
This is why we are so happy that there was a, a declarations in Senate submitted to make sure that Russia is announced as a, a state sponsor of terrorism. This is critical because um, once it's uh, declared a sponsor of terrorism, then all the economic relations with Russia would be toxic to all the other countries, and uh, it will create this united push that the European Union is doing with the sanctions, and the United States is doing with uh, saying no, no economic relations with Russia if you want to remain a part of the civilized world. And lastly, what do you make of Emmanuel Macron's comments that it'll take decades for Ukraine to be accepted into the European Union? I don't think that uh, Emmanuel Macron received a lot of support for this declaration. And I think politically it hurt him more than it hurt Ukraine. Our aim to join the European Union and have the full membership is written in our constitution. This is what we are fighting for. And Putin started war because he said that he sees the risks of ours joining the European Union and joining NATO. So this is basically what we are fighting for. And right now, while Ukraine submitted the second portion of uh, the questionnaire to becoming of EU member, we see all the possibilities for us to become EU member soon. And uh, we absolutely believe this, and we see no objections on doing this. So Macron's statement are, uh, I would say, again, rather giving more support to Ukraine than to himself. Kira Rudik, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate you talking to us. Thank you, and glory to Ukraine.